So I was saying, we wonder where is God when we face such difficulties. Life is very difficult. To be it home and abroad, most of us are here, yeah, we, we are here and we are, we are also at our places elsewhere. Life is very difficult for us. So what's, what's the way forward? What, what are we looking for? Uh, what are we looking uh, towards uh, as, as life is like that? I mean, I think the the song said, how far are we from home? This world is not our home. Uh, are, we, are we together? Yeah. Can we say it's our home? No. no. Uh, well, we are camping here for the meantime, and then we are on our way to, to our heavenly kingdom. But uh, as long as I mean, the, the situation that we live in, it's like the psalmist says, how can we sing the Lord's song in a foreign land? It's very difficult to do that because we are living in a very difficult situation where things are not are not well with us. There are wars everywhere. There is flooding. One, 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 one end of the road is flooding. The other one is actually being roasted in the sun. I don't know how God does that, but people are actually, uh, it's very chaotic. It's a situation whereby people are, uh, people have food. Some have food, uh, much food. Uh, I, I, I just want to paint a picture here. It says we are living in interesting times when prophecies are being fulfilled in our right in our, in our own eyes. We live in times when many we have got many human beings. I think that one of them is about eight billion people, but there's less humanity. We, we, there, are, there are many people, but we are not we are not interacting well together. One says well, we live in, a, uh, in, in times where the rich has more rooms in his house, whereas the poor uh, has more rooms than children. In Right? Whereas the poor is more, I mean, there's more children than the rooms in this house. That's, that's the situation we are living in. Okay? Then it says here, we are living in times where smartphones bring us closer, those who are far. The smartphones that we have, they bring us closer with those people, but for us to get here, we are not close to them. It's such a time that we are living in. We live in times where we opened our Facebook, Instagram, X, is, that, is it X or Twitter, former Twitter, Snapchat, more than we opened the Bible, the Bible, the Holy Bible. These are the times that we are living in. Uh, we live in times uh, where a single mother can look after ten children. I mean, for, for, for some of us here, yeah, it's very difficult, but they can look ten children, right? But a single mother can look after ten children. But uh, ten children cannot, cannot look after one mother. I don't know. Do you get the iron here? She can look after the ten. And they grow up, they, are, they go to better schools. They, but when it comes to looking after their mother, they can do that. That's the world that we are living in. We live in the times when uh, we have our, our contact list. Uh, I saw someone is going to have almost 5,000 followers. Right? But uh, how close are you close with those people? They are your followers, they are your friends, you have got a friend list on Facebook or your contact list. But how 
there's no appreciation, there's no communication with those people. There is no closeness. Well, I mean, we, there, there are numbers, but there is not that close uh, contact with them. And there's less appreciation in whatever we, we, we are doing. We live in times when we know uh, how to earn a good living, but somehow we forget how to live good. We know how to earn a good living, but uh, we forget how to live good, to live that life that we need. We live in times where many know the price of everything, but not the value of everything. They know the price of it, but not the value. And one was saying, uh, for some, they walk, I mean, the, the rich man or the rich person walks in order to get the food down. I mean, he's just said a good meal for the walk so that he, at least he can, he can relax. But the way, the way is, I mean, some people are walking long distance for them to get the food. I mean, do you get what I'm saying? One, he just he has had a good meal. He walks in order to eat food. I mean, he has a good digestion, a good nice day. Whereas somebody is going to walk that distance in order to get the food. It's, it's, it's a difficult situation that we find ourselves in. But um, as I say, why, what, are, uh, what are we saying this morning? I just want to uh, refer you to this. It says, the object in the mirror is closer than it appears. Have you ever seen that on your, in your car? It says, the object well, in the mirror is closer than you think. So you need to, to look, look carefully. Okay? And then he goes on to say, Jesus is coming soon. Are you ready? That's, that's our message this morning. He is coming. Are you ready? I've painted a picture here. It might be as dire. You know what, what you are going through? Sicknesses, as floods, wars. You can't just find, I mean, five people are killed and then you kill a thousand people. And you can't justify that. I know you've been provoked, but you can't justify the killing of five against a thousand or more. I'm just, I'm just saying, this is the world that we live in, right? Um, but the thing is now, he says that Jesus is coming again. The prophecies that we had, they've been fulfilled. They are being fulfilled in our time. So what, what does it mean to you and to me? Jesus is coming again. But the question is, are you ready? Um, 2 Timothy chapter 3, this is 1 to 5. It paints a, a scenario that we find ourselves in now. Um, 2 Timothy chapter 3. All right, uh, those with eyes, can you read? <laughs> Let's read together. Hello? Oh, you want me to? Okay, I'll read from this. It says, This know also that in the last days, perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. Do we have these things in our lives now? Okay. Without natural affection, truth breakers, Fails accusers, in, uh, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, healthy, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof from such turn away. May the Lord pay the person to the living of his way. It describes the situation that, that we find ourselves in. When people are lovers of themselves. People, I mean, one, I think, you know, read about people, several people who lose their life when they are being self selfish on a cliff. You are at the edge of the cliff, then you do yourself. I don't know whether. Then, in a moment, try to adjust your camera or something, you fall into your death. I mean, yeah, it's a way of self self -harm. I'm not saying don't do it yourself, please, please. You do yourself, but be careful how you do that. You say, people, they are lovers of themselves. They are cavacious. You want to have everything, every, every good thing that comes should be yours, not, not somebody's, but yours. It's all about me, 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 and not, I mean, uh, not, nothing, nothing else to do with others. But it says that they, they are thankful. People are, I mean, gratitude is a way that, I mean, it should be a way of life to be grateful every day. As I say, 
if we have been given a life by the Lord, he has given us, given us, he has given us means we need to be grateful and to be grateful for that. But what we do in this world that we are living in, we, we are not, we are, we are insincere. We are not grateful. We complain. We read about this morning. People complain. But it's not good for us. It says here, yeah, people are, uh, 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 children are disobedient to their parents. They are unthankful, unwilling. It goes on to describe this a very situation that we are living in. But what I want to say is here, yeah, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. This mustn't be our experience. Jesus is coming again. What are we supposed to do? He is coming again. We need to prepare for his soon coming. Um, Luke chapter 17, verse 26 and uh, 28, it talks about the, the description of what we uh, what we are going through today as compared to what it was during the time of Noah. Uh, Noah. Um, reading from verse 26 as it was in the days of Noah so shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man as it was in the days of Noah so shall it be in the days of the Son of Man what was happening he said they did eat, they drank they made wives, they were given to marriage until they, Noah entered into the ark and the flood came and destroyed them Likewise, as it was in the days of God, they did eat, they drank, they brought, uh, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built. But uh, the same day that the Lord went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone. Verse 30. Even that so, it shall be in the day when the Son of Man is built. How far from home? The signs are happening. It uh, uh, says that the days of Noah, people were killed. If you look at the, uh, the expansion of Australia, I mean, of Sydney now, it's, 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 I mean, many houses are being built. Right? Many industries are being built. Uh, people are, are being married. So it, it's a sign that, that uh, Christ is coming soon. But what are we supposed to do as we, uh, as we, as we live day by day? It shows that Christ is, is coming soon and we are supposed to get ready to meet, to meet him. Uh, the children of God, we are supposed to watch and pray. Watch and pray. The signs, I mean, as you, yeah, if you are traveling from, say, from Sydney or, or from, I mean, you are driving from Melbourne to, to Sydney, there are signs, road signs on the, on, on the way. They will check you how many days you are from, from Sydney, right? 10 days, 20 days, or, or, or 500 kilometers away. There are signs that are telling you. These signs that we find in our life now, they tell us that Jesus is about to come. But since he's about to come, what are we supposed to, to do? Probation is, is, is coming to an end soon. We don't know how much time is left. Because one was saying, and uh, it says, in the, in the days to come, our scoffers will come to you. They'll say, where is the promise? Where is the promise uh, our Savior? But it says that God is not, God is not slow in, in, in doing what he has promised. But what he wants us to do is to repent and turn away from our sins so that we won't perish, but we'll be able to be ushered into the new kingdom. Though it might seem as if he's, 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 he's delayed, he is coming and he's coming soon. Uh, and we need to, to be ready for his soon coming. How do we get ready? Uh, there's a, I mean, there's a, I would like to pose this question. Being ready and, and getting ready at the end is one and the same thing. Hello? Being ready and getting ready, are they one and the same thing? Ah, uh, I mean, share. let's share your, share your view. We are together in this. Yes? Uh, when you are ready, it means yes. you are ready. At the, whatever needs to happen at the moment, let's go. But okay. Be getting ready. Yes. We are in the process of getting to the point where at any time things happen. Okay. So they are different. One is there, one is on their way to getting there. All right. You'll be traveling to Zimbabwe in four weeks' time. Right? When are you? When are you? When do you say you are getting ready? That period before the flight. Okay. Is it week one, week two, week three? Then you will be counting the weeks, the furthest from the flight. <laughs> okay. Uh, what? What? I mean, 
Say, so when they are saying this, you are getting ready, so you are preparing week one and preparing you are taking your bags until you come to you come to week four when you are ready to go, right? But when you say we are ready, you know you have got a journey before which time week one you already done. If there is any change of plans, it's already done. So what I'm trying to say here is we, we, we mustn't be getting ready. But you know what? I don't know whether, as I say, normally say English is my second language, my third language. I don't know whether I actually explain it well. But uh, getting ready is a process. But being ready, you're ready now. If you come now, we should be ready to go. I don't know. This is the way you can do that one. I think being ready is only five minutes. Because you buy a ticket? Yes. Okay. You're ready to go. Yeah, Which one of the two are you? 
And you put four, four hands down, your point is you are focusing on the world. You are not focusing on the world that is, you are in any other situation, you are not focusing on the world, you are focusing on the water. But we have compared these two. The one who is drinking, a lot, I mean, like as it says, like a dog, right? Flipping his, putting the water in his mouth, he is ready for work. In a way, this is, should be our, our scenario in life. Be ready. Focus, make your focus on Christ. Uh, Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12. Um, it's a very familiar text that we normally use, but I want to make use of it this morning. Uh, prior to what has been happening here, we find that um, uh, there's listed the heroes of faith. There are heroes of faith that are being, uh, are, are being said about in and chapter, and chapter 11. So this is a witness to us, he says here, and I'm just going to say, Wherefore, I'm reading from 12, verse 1 and 2. Wherefore, seeing we are compassed about with such a great cloud of weaknesses, let us, as, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which that so easily beset us, and let us run with impression the race that is so, that is so set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finish of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. Despising the shame, he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Where are we supposed to focus? Focus. Not on the water, not on what is happening around you. Focus on Jesus. He is the one that we finish up our faith. If we put our trust in him, if we listen to him, we will make it. Uh, there's a scenario that uh, that we find Peter doing and the, the other disciples. Soon after Jesus, uh, I mean, uh, when he died, uh, people were sort of disillusioned. They didn't have much to do. Then they said, so Peter says, ah, let's go fishing. Right? You, you remember that scenario? He says, let's go what? Let's go fishing. Uh, there's nothing more to do here. Our ministry, I mean, whatever we've been striking for, he's dead, he's risen, but we don't know what's going on. So they said, let's go fishing. And they go, they go fishing. Yes, they said, the Bible says they told all nights. And they, how many fish did they get? They said, it was nothing, zero. Not nothing. Then in the morning, when Christ he came to them, he said, he, he, he asked them, how many, how many fish have you after they caught? said, nothing. Then he told them to do, I mean, to, to, to cast their net for the seven sun. The moment they believed God that He can do it, the moment they trusted God, the Bible says that they caught as many fish as they couldn't actually, they had to call out the boss to come and help. What am I saying? We need to, as we prepare for our soon coming, when we soon come, we need to have a relationship with God, to trust His word. Whatever God says, that He will do. Whatever God, if He promised to be with us, he will be with us. If he tells us to, to cast our net a certain way, we need to do that. I think also, I mean, I'm reminded also when, when, the, when the wine finished at the wedding of Christ, the first, the first miracle Jesus did, he said, he said to them, listen to what he tells you. Listen or do whatever he tells you. The moment they did what he told them, what happened? There was, there was right. What am I trying to say? The Lord is saying, I am with you. We need to have that relationship with him. We need to know him, to trust him in whatever we do. The moment we don't trust him, the moment we want to do things on our own, like, uh, like, like Peter and his other disciples, the moment we try to do things on our own, we will actually catch nothing. We won't be in a position to be ready for his own coming. But the moment we have that knowledge of him, then we will, we will, we will be able to, 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 to begin uh, to, uh, to be prepared. That, as I said, the other thing that we are looking forward to is his soon coming. Titus chapter 2, verses 12 to 14. Titus chapter 2, verses 12 to 14. Uh, anyone to read? Hello? Teaching us that uh, denying ungodly and godly last, mm -hmm. we should uh, live sober, mm -hmm. righteous, and godly in this present world. Mm -hmm. Looking for that blessed hope 
when they will be faithful, Christ soon come. Uh, Hebrews chapter, chapter 10, verse 37 and 39. I just want to say, Jesus is coming again. And he's coming for you. You need to be ready for his coming. Um, this this thirty uh, seven, he says here, for yet a little while, he that shall come will come and will not turn. What does he say? For yet a little while, he that shall come will what? Uh, he doesn't say may come. I don't know. As I said, he may be out here. He says he doesn't say he may come. He says, he what? What does it mean when it says, he will come? It's certain, isn't it? It's not, some, it's not a guess fact that he may come, but it just says here, he who is coming will come and will not tell. Now the just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, my soul shall not be, but shall have no place in him. Let's get to my, I, want us, I want us to read this book. I mean, to read verse 39 together. Okay? Are we ready? What does it say? <laughs> May that be our friend. That we are not of those who are, who are, who are, who are drawing back. We are preparing for we are preparing for his own. He has made provision. He is there for us. In whatever situation that you are going through, Christ is with you. It doesn't matter your condition, it doesn't matter your position in life. He says, I love you, and you done for us on the cross. He is there for you, whatever you have done, as I say, you have not gone too far for his grace. He has he still loves you. Whatever situation that you find yourself, Christ loves you and is, he is coming back for you. It is my, it is my, my prayer this morning that as he is coming, let us be ready. Time is flying. You never know. You're tomorrow, who knows what you'll be doing tomorrow or whether you'll be there tomorrow. It might, it might be my last, my last Sabbath with you, but you never know. But when that happens to us, are we ready to meet our Christ? He is coming, are we ready for him? He is there, he will, he will see us all the way. As I say, no matter the challenges that we are finding ourselves in, He is there, He has promised that He will be with us. So there's nothing to fear as, we, as long as we put our lives in Him, He will take us. He says He's coming and I'm coming. He says He's coming and He's coming quickly. Uh, Revelation 22, uh, verse 17, uh, it says here, 22, verse 17. And the spirit and the bride say, Come. And let him that hears say, Come. And let him that is at death come. And whosoever will let him take the water of life freely. There's an invitation for us here. He says, the, the spirit and the bride, they say, Come. They are being invited. And let him that hears come. And let him that is at death come. And whosoever will, let him take the water of life free. Uh, verse 20. It says, He who testifies these things says, Truly, I come quickly. Then John says, Amen. If the so Lord come. May the Lord help us. Thank you so much.